Hello guys, good evening and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Ripster Daily Trade Recaps and Daily Teachings. Today is February 20th, um, short week, start of a new week. Uh, it was relatively a slow day uh, for trading in the community today for me. So we will discuss that. There were not many news plays, but we were still able to nail some uh, day two and uh, semiconductor plays and shorting the market. So, um, so we'll discuss all that guys for today and uh, we'll talk about uh, NVIDIA earnings tomorrow in the end as well. Um, before I start, just a quick introduction for everyone, everybody or anybody who's new to me, my Twitter, my YouTube or new to the community. Um, just a quick um, introduction. So these recaps, these trade recaps and teachings are from the trades that I am taking or anybody in my community is taking any ideas that I don't take but I help my community and you know we talk about it, we trade, we make money on them, we lose money on them, whatever we do. So I'm trying to recap all those, any ideas that I share on Twitter or with my, on my public, public profile, anything, we try to recap everything. And in our community, we always play repeatable setups. We do not do anything random. We do not take anything based on gut feelings. We stick with the trend. We try to identify the trend and we stick with the, our repeatable, repeatable setup, repeatable system. Setup is what, you know, um, what we trade and system is how we trade. Both of those for us are repeatable and we do those again and again, same thing every day. Every morning in the pre-market, me and my team, we are up early. We are up early. We are, we, you know, I go through a lot of new sources, pre-market movers one, pre-market movers two, and going through analyst upgrades, downgrades, and we create a, what we call a game plan in the pre-market. Today's game plan was this one with MSTR, DFS, Roku, Vizio, Walmart, Disney, HD, Nvidia, Caterpillar and you know a few others. So there was not nothing that was like crazy crazy um, crazy good, but we did trade uh, Walmart and, and I personally traded Walmart and then tra we traded Home Depot, Nvidia, Roku uh, in the community as well and DFS. So we'll talk about those and then we also create what we call is levels. So the levels are for the marketplace which we uh, play every day regardless right spy qqq apple microsoft amd boeing amazon all those which we play every day we create these levels so that everybody can take those levels and trade the trade on their own um you know during the trading day based upon these levels and ema clouds we can understand the bias where we want to risk where is the trend for example, we will discuss uh, Google reversal today, Apple short today based upon these support and resistance pivots. We will discuss that as well and maybe we'll talk about Meta as well which was strong today based upon these daily levels. When market opens, I'm usually on voice for two or two or two and a half hours guiding everybody through the morning sessions, what I'm looking at, what I'm trading, what is the market trend, is bearish or bullish and we you know, so and then I share my thoughts on on our, our trading floor or our alerts tab, you know, so that we can take some trades. We always take our morning trades, which are from 9:30 to 10 a.m. Then we look for midday reversal setups or midday uh, 10 a.m. setups, which I cover in a lot of my webinars in community. Those repeatable setups. That's what we look for. So that's what, how we work in the community. That's our daily plan. Let's get started with the first play of the day. Before I start, guys, I, I launched something today. I launched uh, a new labels. Um, you know, I've been working on these for some time. These labels that I created, they are called Ripster Trend Labels. You can uh, find them in, in the indicators, uh, community scripts. You can search them and then you can, uh, you know, add them to your favorite. Actually, um, you have to follow the link. Let's see if you can find them. Yeah. So, yeah. so you have to find those in the community scripts and then you have to add them to your favorites then they will show up your favorites anyways so what these labels do is it's basically just helps the trading with the clouds um, we all know the 
you know, we trade the cloud system and we just trying to help ourselves with a better visualization, you know, to see that what is the trend, right? If based upon my 10 minute system, is the trend bearish, is the trend bullish? And, um, you know, and uh, what is the chop? Something that are added here is a chop price action. So price action can be chop, price action can be, um, price action can be bullish, or bullish or price action can be bearish this is in addition to the ripster clouds so that's why um, I have it here if all of these are in the same direction so if all of these are in the same direction then it's it's um, it, it's a high probability trend in that direction but but if any of those is different we can still trade it but you have to see like for example right here the lunar was bullish and turning bearish on 512s, although the price action was bullish and ripster cloud 3450 is bullish and then 512 is bullish, you see how it pulls back and pushes higher. And this price action is based upon my teachings of chop and trend, the teachings that over the pre-market pre uh, high lows and pre-market pivots. That's what I'm using right now in these, um, you know, in these, these uh, labels. In future, I might, might add some more pivots to find my chop and uh, trend analysis, chop or trend analysis. So, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty helpful to visualize. And you know, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of indicators. All I use is the Ripster clouds and labels. I do use because labels just tells us. You know, you can't take blindly trades based upon these, but it tells us what the trend is. You know, the high level visualization. If I'm looking at something, I can tell it, and it's most it. It works best when you start of the day from 9.30 in the market hours, you know, and because it resets every morning. So this, you know, so can definitely help a lot for a lot of those who are having hard time with managing the trades with the clouds. You can use these labels and they are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty helpful, you know, especially when you're trying to figure out is the trend changing, is the trend um, going up, going down, you know, as you, we all know that the rules are the same for Ipster. EMA clouds under 3450 over 3450 is the bigger pivot and then smaller smaller pivots are 512 ripster clouds so if everything is bullish it means it's a strong bullish trend you take a pullback you long if everything is bearish it means it's a strong bearish trend and you short on the bearish now if the price action is in choppy range it can still be bullish or bearish but then you know that you know you have to trade accordingly because we're still in a range bound uh, price action choppy range so um, you know can you you know so it's just the rules are the same it's just a visualization and you know it will definitely help you find those spike qqq chop or range bound you guys often ask me here if is it's a chop or it's is it a trend so i built this tool so that as you know at least you will know that are we in a chop range or are we in a trend range so this will definitely help a lot of you there so just wanted to do a quick introduction on the new trend levels. So hopefully this can help you all. And please comment in the, on the label page how it's helping you or if you want to see some more changes or anything. You know, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. So, uh, all right. So that was about the labels, guys. Let's start with our first play. So all right guys, uh, so what was SPY doing this morning? So let's go back, let's go back and look at our pivots that I gave in this morning on SPY. So the pivots this morning was 497 and the QQQ was 427, those were support pivots. So we were gapping down, so we were gapping down, so we were bearish, right? So the first thing you identify in the morning is, are we bullish or are we bearish? So we were bearish, right? The clouds were bearish, the trend was bearish, so we were bearish. Now, if the lows, if, if it gets over the cloud, then we're looking at a bullish reversal. If it doesn't, stays under these pivots from yesterday, then it's, um, then it's bearish. And as you see, my pivots held strong, and then all those pivots held strong, and then 497 and 427, once that gave up, 497 and then 427, that area gave up, it was an easy short, guys. It was an easy short, and that's what we did. You know, I was clearly on voice telling everybody we were short. We were short. I mean, I can go and show you here um, in the comments. So we were, um, so we were short. I told everybody we watch the pre-market lows. We break down. We fade more. I said scalp short both, right? 
So we, we showed it, it, I did better on QQQ because QQQ was weaker because of the semiconductors. And remember, we always keep track on what the market is doing, what are all the sectors are doing. You try to see what sector is weak that is taking down QQQ. So all day the semiconductors were weak. You can see semiconductors was, is, you know, for the day, um, they were minus 1.5. And you know, whole day we were tracking the semiconductors, how they are doing, and they were pretty weak. So QQQ was giving us much better fade, guys. It faded from like try to push, rejected. When you see this rejection, you can take like a short right there as well, and then you can add into the breakdown, right? Or when you see this pivot breakdown that I gave in the pre-market, you can just add a starter there and trade that into 10 a.m. Because if it's breaking before 10 a.m., usually we get the you know, we get the fade into 10 a.m. and that's where we take our first profits, right? So 497 to 496 is here and then 427s and, uh, you know, to, um, to 424s there. So the puts were really nice move there, you know, um, on SPY and QQQ, you know, um, so you got those, so 10 a.m. cover for 426 puts went 100%. And um, then we started to bounce, then we faded again. You see, this was the resistance. It bounced, but this was the resistance, and we faded again. And we used our WIX strategy for this. So WIX strategy is simple. I told everybody, if WIX over 40, 15, 50, that's the pivot for the day. I told everybody right away. And then we pushed over 14, 50, we faded on the SPY. Then it pulled back, then again it pushed over 15, 50, and then came the bigger fade, another short, right? So you can see I gave everybody this alert on SPY and VIX. You, if you see there, there was a SPY, um, I gave this VIX alert in the middle mid of the day that said we are going over 1549. And then market faded from 496s all the way to 494.40s. So that was an easy short. The short in the morning, short later in the day. Just using the SPY VIX strategy, guys. Just using the SPY VIX strategy. You know, no, nothing complicated about it. And, you know, you could see that so much, so much value we provide all these price alerts, a repeatable strategy. VIX strategy is such a strong strategy. You can make a living off it. I've shown you again and again and again. So that was a solid play on the short side, QQQ, or most of the day. Uh, and it curled later in the day and we were, we didn't really need to do anything. We did trade some curls on NVIDIA and AMD that I will show you in a bit. But uh, you could easily see the all day, the trend was downside, right? If you draw a trend line, you will see that. So you just have to stick with the trend, stick with the trend. So as you see here, we did really good today on QQQ, SPY, shorts, you know, so that was really good for us. So, all right, guys, let's look at Walmart. So what did we do on Walmart? What was our plan? So Walmart, let's go back to our news uh, pre-market news planning. So Walmart, you know, they bought Vizio and they had um, good revenue growth. So I was bullish to neutral because it was little extended from the clouds. So when it's little extended from the clouds, it's not always that I just want to, uh, you know, uh, trade it because my risk is little higher. But I saw the strength right away at open. I saw the strength. I should go to like three minutes. Maybe you guys see the morning trade better. So I can go to the three minutes chart here, right? So if I go here, you know, or maybe just one minute, let's one minute, let's just go to one minute. So when I saw that on my 10 minute chart and I said, I want to scalp it long right away at 931, as soon as market opened, I, you know, I was like, we need to scalp it long. And it pushed, it was pushing from, uh, what was our pivot? Let's go back. So our pivot was uh, 179.34, right here, this area. So as soon as it broke with volume, I started scalping and I told everybody, which, you know, scalp it, scalp it long. And that push, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was not bad. You know, it was 179.40, we pushed into 181 area. So that was a nice push. That's fine. You you know you take scalp that, and then when it pulled back, you know at 9:33s it's pulling back, and um, you know the risk is 177. That's what I told everybody, and it held the dips and then pushed again. You know you add those dips again and pushed again. 
and again it pushed towards my target was 182 and it hit 181.35 and then it started to pull back right and now we can go to 10 minute I can show you what was happening there because other thing was the market was weak so when market is weak your your long trades are like low probability you know it's, it's hard to get them working but anyways we're still holding a small piece and it kept bouncing from our dips holding the clouds it pushed to the 181 um, you know 185 later in the day by 10 a.m we were still green by 10 a.m from where we entered so you know you know i logged some profit there into 10 a.m and um, then then it couldn't get higher lower lows lower highs lower highs and then i got out you see 512 was breaking right here you know 10 20s i got out because it was breaking 512s i could have done a b minus short as well you know for from 512s to 3450 you know you could easily short that that's it's always when 512 breaks it goes to 3450 but i didn't you know i didn't need to but uh, but i told everyone that it's breaking down right and look at what happened when we exited after we exited you know it faded from 179 all the way to 175 so like it faded almost three three points that you know and we saved that money right so you just need to know when you have to get out and when you have to stay in so uh, so yeah you see the guidance right so it's not always about making money it's about saving your money and somebody asked me that rip should we buy it here i said no because we are far away from the clouds and it's breaking the bear flag and that's what happened it pulled back into bear flag and then we traded this trade intraday um, i saw the bounce this is our midday setup we call it a midday 3450 setup i told everybody 3450 scalps gives you some reversal so it, we were right here when i said that we were around uh, let's see what what was the time around that 1340 1350 yeah we were right here right here 176 20s and then it started to work you know it started to work it pushed like 176 20s to 177s it pushed a little bit when it pushed here i told everybody um you know put the stops break even because either you lose or either you break even or you make money and for, and you know you move the stops up it tried to push and then again failed and that time you were out for break even because um, because it's not holding up it's not holding that trend and uh, so the midday plan did not really work out unless you were just scalping 60 70 cents but i want to want you to understand and know this life cycle of walmart trade and you know and it's not surprising this will always happen if the trend has held if trend holds then we could have seen higher and if it breaks we go back to 3450 the bounce setup didn't work that's fine we didn't lose crazy money just a little bit tad bit here and that's it right so uh watching walmart for day two it's heavy i think it's going to fill the gap if it can't hold this level we can easily fill the gap back to 172 173 area so all right guys let's go to the next one so let's talk about smci all right so smci as always was on our watch list every day the level were given on SMCI was 765 and 800. Resistance pivot was 834. Right. So those were our levels on SMCI. Now let's see what SMCI did. Right. So SMCI, there are a few levels, 800. Remember, 800. Could not get over 800. So whenever it's eight in 800, it's bearish because the psychological level is under the cloud. Now all we wanted to see was the breakdown of the pre-market lows, this 765 area. You can always have a starter there. I missed it. I was a little late, and but I did did say tell everybody right at open that it's bearish, right? It's bearish, and then as soon as it breaks that, that's it. You watch the pops. You hit the pops. You should have hit the short on this pop to 765. That's it. Just take your puts. Your stops are at you know 800 or you know high of this candle you can have two three dollar stops your stops are like 20 20 bucks or something like that and um, when you're shorting here your stops are right at this pivot the pivot i gave you guys here at 765 uh, here right here so then it was all about the targets right the first target i gave everybody was uh, let's expand it let's see you know when i don't have it expanded you don't see the um, the magnitude of 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 these this this sell-off right 
So basically from 765 we sold to 694. You know, we sold uh, almost 70 points just from there. And from 800, we sold 100 points. You know, it's a lot of money to be made in SMCI today. But anyways, I gave the 750 target timestamp. You can see there. Then my next target was 742, 744. Then first target met, covered the 60% of position. Then the next 20% of position I covered in 720 target. And then 700 was my next one where I was, you know, covering all. So I covered all. And I was watching if I want to add some 600 puts and uh, you know but it started hold up hold started to make a higher lows higher lows higher lows and i was like you know you know we closed it and we always close when 5 12 pm is curl so you see that this was the curl and higher lows higher lows higher lows and I, and then then i was kind of away but then somebody on the trading floor was asking me about smci curl and i said yes you can curl it because that's the setup and they said, what's the target? And I said, 750 again, your first target. The same target on the short side is your first target on the upside because that's right into the clouds. And that's what happened, right? So um, we pushed into these 750. And then I did talk about 700 psychological level when I was on voice. And then of course I guide my, my traders when they ask me about the levels and um, 765 was my next level, we hit that. And I even said that we should hit 720. So all my predictions on the level met because trend is bullish, 512 is bullish, cloud is bullish. You know, <clears throat> we are still in that range bound. You know, if, like if it had crossed that 800, it would have been crazy. That's why this price action says chop range because we are in the morning range, right? So that's why it says chop range, but you could still trade based upon these other clouds. So now it's bearish, so we'll see what it does tomorrow. Um, hammer, candle, kind of hammer, candle there. Um, so it will be interesting. We have clear levels to trade off tomorrow. But another day, another green day on SMCI. All right, guys, let's talk about AMD, NVIDIA. So AMD and NVIDIA, we were short when the open. I already showed you, we were short QQQ. So we were short AMD as well. So we were short AMD. I told everybody to short the pops at 9.33, right at open. I saw the weakness. I told everybody short amd why because amd was weak semiconductors were weak smci was weak qq was weak and amd was breaking down off of a support pivot 170 clean support pivot that i gave in the pre-market and amd faded all the way from 171 to 162 all our target met you know so um, my target was initially 165 and then 162.45 was the um, you know my next next target and we met most of them and then after that once we shorted it then rest of the day we curled amd nvidia look here what i say both 512 of curl setups if it's a good b minus so you 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 know you see the curl you add the pullbacks use your stops under one of the 10 minute candles does you know just find the level you know even if you added 163.90 is one dollar your risk you still made like um, you know, two dollars, one risk to two reward. B minus add up. You only size small, and we also, you know, so and then we did. Uh, we curled the Nvidia. So same thing, Nvidia 512 curls, and you can see the price alerts that come in. Nvidia 512 curls, and Nvidia was also short. I told everybody, all semis are weak. Short any of them. Nvidia also under pivots. So this, if this has told at 950, and you can see that how AMD and NVIDIA both faded with SMCI. What were my pivot levels on, on NVIDIA? NVIDIA pivot levels were pretty straightforward, 715 and 707, and then 715 breaks here, and then 707 breaks here, and all day fade. You know, the puts, puts 100% there as well. So, um, you know, successful guidance, love this, you know, it can't get easier than that, guys. All right, guys, let's look at next one, TTD. So, TTD, TTD was heavy day to short because it was on my day to watch list. I was, you know, again, I've been a little hectic this morning, um, so I could not provide the sheet on the day twos, but I provide my watch list as a link to everybody so that they can add to their trading view. 
and you can see the TTD was on a day two, Roku was on a day two, AMAT was on a day two coin. But let's just discuss TTD here first. So TTD was heavy. I said we can short it. You know, you guys need to remember, right? So we are, you know, we are not an alert service. I'm not alerting. I'm my point is guiding, showing the trades which are working. Yes. We make money, like a lot of people make money in our community today, you know, a lot of people like they made their annual subscription and I tell them, you know, that's good, you're making money, right? Now we will be wrong, we will lose money too. But understand, understand that why are you making money? Mm -hmm. That is important. Then we can keep making money together because then we lose, we lose less money. And when we gain, we gain good, solid, solid gains. So that is the truth. That is the teaching that I teach everybody. So anyways, TTD was good short. You see, first five minutes, I told everybody TTD short, you know, cover most in 82 target. When, you know, our 82 target met by 10, 13 a.m. As I left one fourth. My final target was 80 bucks, guys, 80 bucks. But there was a fib level at 81. If I go here on, um, you know, there was a fib level. If we can just, we can just take this and just draw from lows to highs. You will find that there was a, Fib level right here. Um, no, no, not this one. Let me see which one was it. So we had a fib level. Let me see. Wrong, 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 wrong. So there was a fib level around here. You could draw various fibs if you take. Uh, let's just take this one. Low highs. So you could see that right. There was a fib level right here from highs to the lows. And that fib level was where TTD was bouncing. Once it broke, I was expecting we get um, 80. That's fine. We were close. And then I closed my last piece when it curled back. So nice TTD winner trade as well. So we had a trade on Roku, but didn't really, you know, work too much. The gap down on Roku kind of spoiled it, you know, for us today. You know, for, um, it didn't, it chopped a lot, right? So it was, we were short and, um, but it kept bouncing. And that's why we only, Short the pops and we were covering we were covering 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 and our target was uh, 65 20 we were doing pretty good by 10 30 on our Roku short because we started shorting um, Right at 67 and you know, it was working, but then it held up then it held up and then it came back over 512 cloud right and then there was no short. it was just you know chopped so we just had to take um, you know quick uh, quick out a loser after the commission so um, didn't really work out but that's fine small scratch it was green trade if you scalp here but um, you know I was hoping we get more but I could tell when it was just consolidating that's not gonna work so the other one guys which um, was a you know trade idea in the community today was coin and um, when I saw this weakness on the coin this flush this flush candle I told everybody watch the shorts a reason I say watch the pops because you want to have a better entry. If you add, you can always have a starter, that's fine. But I always, because there's many new traders who will just slap the ask when I say something. So I encourage everyone to short the pops. Advanced traders can trade however they want to because they know there's an idea, there's a short setup. But the new traders are the ones which need to be told. Anyways, the point was the coin was a short watch right at open. And... Um, and same rules right same same rules when we break the pre-market lows we fade more and you just fade it all day right 512 EMA rights so um you know my targets were you know 170 165 we met all the targets on coins so that was not a not bad setup you can see there he created this nice little reversal reversal setup right in our set and shoulders so intraday so how it curled so it was a good good setup if you take this 512 curl, this is not a bad actually, you know. So anyways, uh, um, coin was a nice one in the community. Nice job by a lot of traders there. <laughs> so let's look at um, Apple, Meta, Google. So guys, Apple was simple. It was just, you know, this trade was supposed to be short based upon the pivot levels. And I saw the weakness. Market was weak. See, we were shorting SPY, QQQ, same thing. You short Apple, and, you know, it's a market. 
and either you can show if apple is weak markets will be weak most likely mostly if apple is heavy so anyways apple support was 181.15 181.69 and those both of those levels gave you nice shorts on apple right so it was um, and we were i told everybody to cover on 180 because 180 is a big um, big huge level you see i told everybody cover 180s i already told them at 10 a.m and that time you were in on 181s and we hit 180 as well right and same and then if you look at the same thing on meta right so meta was uh, spiking at open right spiked at open was a little choppy but google was which one was really really strong at open it pushed over the clouds held the clouds and then it kept pushing over the flag breakout right so if you go back to your pivots on the google the pivots were 140 19 140 37 140 19 140 30, both pivots break so there's a difference between google and meta so if you're trying to long meta you don't want to see these red candles right you want to see green candles holding up here that's what you want not the red candles and then you stop out here if it pushed over the pivots you stop out here right if you scattered in the morning that's fine but then you just step away but google was comparatively different and very proud of my traders in the community they were nailing google on their own i was actually late you know i didn't so i didn't trade it but steve fan was on top of google it was beautiful you know i told people about the flag though i did say that we have a flag but um, you know but but that was good google just google touched the uh, one hour resistance i think on the chart yeah that's where it rejected you see that one hour cloud resistance but google is still on my swing watch so we'll keep an eye uh, i like the daily if market is good google can be good so there was another idea on dfs guys so dfs i think um, so the dfs the news on dfs was um where did it go where did it go capital one was acquiring discover financial of course you know these deals can not fully complete yet but so but we trade it, it if it broke the pivot it could have easily faded it a little bit because there can always be some regulatory issues but what did dfs do it was initially bearish you see here right but then i told everyone that dfs is holding this cloud and i told on the voice it's, it was on the voice actually you know i was talking about so i told that you can begin long versus the, the those clouds and look at this bounce draw the trend line your clear risk 50 ema here and you can bounce it from 123s all the way to 127s right i just want to show you this setup based upon the cloud now if it went under the clouds we would have left it we would not have traded it right so you can see there uh, my guidance um, i was on the voice and i was told about those all right before i wrap up um, one more thing i want to talk about is um, these these uh, day two other day two setups am amat was was a good short it was on my watch list but sadly i was not on top of it and i didn't really tell my community um, to short it but uh, it was on my watch list it was nice easy day two if somebody shorted it i'm really proud of that there are some other trades as well on day two and day three lift was a nice day two short you see how it broke down of uh, you know this bearish uh, one hour 34.50 and then it kept fading i'm really proud of the traders who are in play not even those in my community even those who you you guys who watched my um, you know who watched who, who watched my see jaswinder was on top of it lift uber day three look at that so people are learning understanding they are getting much better you know so um that's 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 what we do that's how we do it you know see alan was doing good he made the whole our subscription in one more you know one morning so that's about repeatable setups you know that's why we you know i feel so happy when other traders are doing the trades like um, you know lift a mat which i forget you know they are even bef there before me and it i feel so confident when i see um, you know traders doing that and i find trade ideas because of them you know so that was good let's look at nvidia you know i will i will put some nvidia earning analysis in the morning but um, let's just look at the chart wise what we are looking at here on the chart guys so the chart wise we are um, you know we are holding this trend line you know which is kind of the first time i mean this is the first time yeah 
So for NVIDIA, what I was saying was, this is the first time that it has been showing this, um, it, it broke the 512 EMA clouds for the first time. And tomorrow in the earnings, of course, earnings will be good, that's for sure, but the reaction to the earnings, we have no idea what the reaction to the earnings is going to be. And uh, from the level wise, if it pushes over 750, if it's good earnings and good response, yes, then it can, you know, probably squeeze higher. But general consensus is that NVIDIA earnings will put a top on the semiconductors, right? Because you take any semiconductor you want to take and you want to see it has been straight up, straight up, straight up since then. I do like AMD as a proxy of NVIDIA if NVIDIA earnings is good. So I will be watching AMD on this support level tomorrow. But anyways, anyways, guys, um, so the point, quick point on NVIDIA is that it, it has some profit taking into the earnings. Earnings will be good, that's for sure. We don't know what will be the result. And um, we'll keep eyes either way. You know, if you really want to gamble, you just put in a lot of put lot of call. You can. I don't do that. I don't teach it. I don't recommend it. I will trade it after hours, whatever it will do. Um, tomorrow, if tomorrow it stays under 695, 700, we can short it into the earnings. So if it gets over 700, then it's going to chop, make an inside day, maybe it pushes 720, and you know, we don't know. So uh, trade it accordingly. Watch if seven, we use this 700 and 694 levels for tomorrow. Um, and if it really stays under 700, then it's going to fade back into, this is all into the earnings, you know. Uh, you can see the volume that is sold today, high relative volume today, 140% relative volume sold on NVIDIA. So, um, and even ATR was double, you know, it was 200% today. Now we trade that ATR, look at it. Small ATR, small ATR, move, move up. Small. This is a big ATR, nice consolidation, push, push, consolidation, and then the sell today. So this was the area where, you know, it was selling this box here. But anyways, guys, that was it. Going to be exciting week, lot of earnings, lot of opportunities. We'll kill it. Um, somebody was asking about the promo. Yeah, the the viewer, the um, president promo is still on. I think there was a lot of requests, so we left it open for a day or two, so you guys can still get in for fifty percent in our community. All right, guys. Thank you. Later. See ya. See ya. Bye bye.